Well, I'm Fiona Gray Mackay and welcome to my studio. Uh, I'm working here at the moment. Uh, nothing much has changed for me, but I have great... I've been asked to talk a bit about doing the portrait of Seamus Heaney. Um, it was a memorable occasion when we first met. Anybody who has been to his poetry reading uh, would, would know this. Um, it was, we went upstairs and had a nightcap, which um, was great. Seamus came over and spoke to me. We went upstairs and we had a nightcap. Seamus came over and we had a chat. Um, it was suggested that perhaps I might like to do his portrait. Uh, Seamus liked the idea. I certainly did. So we agreed to meet uh, about in a couple of days' time before he went back to Dublin. In Seamus' own words, he said, Sure, we'll have a little drink to take away the shyness. So we met. Uh, there was no shyness, I have to say. Um, we did have a couple of drinks. Anyway, a, a month later, found me over in Dublin, right side on my back, not much else, uh, drawing equipment, because that's what I do to start with. I went to uh, Seamus and Rari's house just outside Dublin, and uh, we started more or less straight away. No niceties, straight down to it. I like to go to somebody's house because uh, the objects that are in the house and how they move in the space in the house tells them, me a great deal about them. And often people will present objects to me. It could be a painting, it could be a little model, it could be, well, it could be anything. Sometimes it's the way somebody uh, strokes the side of a chair as they're sitting. Um, and these things are really important. And I'll make notes and I'll do drawings for all of those things. I do lots and lots of drawings. This is the first way that I start. To me, drawing is committing consciousness to paper. It's really important, really important. Ruskin said everybody should draw. Everybody should learn to draw more than uh, learning the alphabet. Probably in my case, that was quite true. But um, what, what it does, it's very explorative. Um, when I draw, I don't let the intellect come into it in any way. It's a process, it's a looking, it's a finding out. I said to Seamus, look Seamus, I'm going to be doing drawing and I'm not going to show you these drawings. There will be a point where you will see the drawings, but uh, it's not now. He understood that completely. He understood that completely. This is the finding out stage. This is the feeling around. This is a really exciting stage, quite honestly. Now what it does is I, I look and it's the, it's the energy going down here to the hand, to the object, the subject, and it's coming back again. It's almost like a piece of string unraveling. Um, and what I do is I, uh, I don't hold the pencil. When we learn to write, we are taught, taught to hold the pencil like this, usually. And we write from here across, unless you're Arabic, it's the other way around, or Chinese. Um, I like to hold the pencil like this. It becomes a different instrument. I like to stand, okay, because I can distance myself and go in, I can come out. I can use the hand like this. I can use the wrist, the elbow. I can do that. As much energy as I can give to the piece, it comes back to me. So that's important. So this is a finding out stage. Also, we're talking an awful lot. We're talking a lot, Seamus and I. Um, he tells me about the Nobel Prize. Uh, he said that, which I found really quite moving, he said obviously he was delighted to have it. His family were so proud of him. Most of Ireland were amazingly proud, well deserved. But he said to me as he was standing lined up to receive the prize, he said he never felt so lonely standing there. What had he done? To deserve this and I found that very moving anyway he took me into his, his study and there was the prize itself there was a medal and he said sure I have to pay for that you know <laughs> and Seamus was full of stories like this anyway I get um, the uh, all the drawings and I head back to the studio and the studio becomes like an incident room I have all the drawings all the images that I've gotten, take photographs. I write a lot, I do colour swatches. In fact, my way of seeing colour is, um, the way I use, I use pure uh, medium. 
The oil paint, the pastel paint and the watercolour has all the same pure pigment in it. It's a very limited pigment and quite, um, quite pure, I would say. Um, but um, I, move, I like to be able to move from one medium to the other, depending on um, where I am. Obviously, some instances, it's just not practical to get your oil paints out, especially if I'm travelling. And so the pigment in the oil is exactly the same as the pigment in the watercolour and the pigment in the, in the pastel. It's just that the, the oil is the carrier, the water is the carrier, and the chalk is the carrier from my, from my pigment. And that way I, I have that flexibility. I completely submerge myself in that person. In Seamus's case, I would listen to his poetry again. I'd watch film of him. I would really absorb myself. At the end of a week, maybe 10 days, I find that I can draw him without uh, looking. I can, draw almost, I can draw a likeness without um, seeing him. And from that, it gives me the confidence to move on to the composition. Now, composition is really important. You can have the best technique in the world, but if the composition isn't right, it, it's never going to work. It's the skeleton of your, your piece of uh, work. Many people are in such an excited state, they want to rush into it, and they skip over this, this, this stage. But you mustn't do that. Really, it's a process, it's a slog, and there are no shortcuts. But once I get the composition, it's interesting that in a strong personality, somebody like Seamus, uh, I get it in a flash, but I never trust it. I never trust it. Um, I have to go through that process of making extra sure. Now what I do, I don't work on um, stretched canvas or linen. I like to work on unstretched canvas or linen. And that way um, I can change the boundary. Now Degas did this a lot, if you, the photographs I've taken of his paintings, you can see there's a strip of paper or canvas slipped in down the side. He liked to shift, shift the boundary. And so I like to have that flexibility or that option to do so. So I get my canvas or linen, put it on huge board or the wall, and I mask the area off. And that way I can shift my boundary even by a fraction of an inch, which sometimes, believe it or not, I need to be able to do. Now, there are many aspects to composition. Um, what needs to happen is that you need to come into... Let me start. You have four elements to the painting. You've got the painter, you've got the sitter or the subject, you've got the painting itself, and then you've got the viewer. And all these things are interactive and important. And you want to be able to enter into the painting, spend some time there, but also get out of it. You do not want to be trapped into a painting. And the painter's challenge is always to put those dynamics into an image and so that the painter can, can in a sense, enter the picture. And if there are any gaps there, which is a good thing, often why people like watercolour so much is that the, the viewer will fill the gaps themselves mentally and that way they're completing the painting. They're making their own, they're, they're actually entering the painting, making a contribution to the painting. So these are the things that we try and do. We have what we call leader lines. Now these are um, pointers to the main point of interest. In a portrait, obviously, it's got to be the head, it's got to be the, the, the face. You have to say to yourself, what is the main point of interest? And nothing else should be in that painting except anything that's going to highlight the star. Otherwise, it's, it, they shouldn't be there. The, the eye likes to enter from a, a, a picture, an image, let me take this card, from the bottom left hand. It likes to linger round about here, halfway point. There's a tendency to think to yourself, right, I'm going to put the painting slap bang in the middle. Actually, that's the wrong dynamics quite often because there's nothing around that's going to give you an option, any movement. The area around the figure is really important. The space that the figure inhabits is 
just as important as the actual painting itself. It's a hard thing to um, actually understand this for some people. If you were to watch somebody, I don't know where you are watching this, but if you were to put a frame around the shoulders and the head and simply draw an outline of that person, I can guarantee you, you would more or less get a likeness to that person. And this is all to do with how you hold your head. You know, we're, we are a product of, uh, we carry our life story in our bodies. We have an injury here, we have, you know, things happen to us. Um, and we're influenced by that, by our occupation. How do we, how do we hold ourselves? And so this, this is all carried in the body and how we sit. And so you put a frame, you try it the next time you're around people. Put an imaginary frame and just draw an outline around it and you'll be surprised. So always think about this. And this is something I'm always aware of. And therefore, that's why I use the boundary of the masking tape. I work inwards from the boundary. I love to have a boundary. I can be as free as I want as long as I've got a boundary. And I use that boundary as a means to uh, find my way around the painting. So we could say we have pointers and, um, for instance, a uh, vertical line uh, implies um, grandeur. If you think of columns in buildings, grandeur. Horizontal lines um, imply stability. Carved lines imply femininity, fluidity. And all these elements are in a painting. They're all in a painting. And if you think that a curve, a line, is only a dot in a horizontal or a vertical. Now Seamus and I did speak a lot about this, um, the rhythm, music. If you think of musical uh, sheets, musical uh, writing, it's all on horizontals, verticals. And painting is the same. It all breaks down to its simplest form. Yeah. Um, so, the painting. With, with Seamus, uh, here he is. I've got you coming in from the left-hand side, here. I use the hands as a means to bring you in. The chair is holding him. The arms of the chair are pointing here. The white of the shirt is the pointer towards his head. Here is his head, here. Seamus is looking at you. He's challenging. He's questioning, but there's humour and warmth there. Now, I wanted to use the back of Seamus's head. Uh, mir um, mirrors are important. They're, they're a good trick to use, and many painters have done this. The back of the head could be used here on Seamus. He was a man who showed everything in life. He wasn't afraid of vulnerability. And the back of the head, the nape of the neck, is a very, very vulnerable spot, especially in a man. The other thing is the light source. Now, light source is, is everything, really. Light at nine o'clock in the morning is totally different from light at three o'clock in the afternoon. It's a different landscape. So light has to be consistent. I like a natural light when possible. Not always possible, but you know, then you have to recreate it with the artificial light. So we're being brought in here, we're seeing the head of Seamus, he's staring out of us, but we're seeing the back of his head. We're coming in, we're going here, and the light from the reflected window is taking you out there. I also use the horizontals and the verticals here as a measuring device. I'm, I'm working from the outside of the portrait in. I've mapped it all out before I start. So what can go wrong in a painting? Well, many things do go wrong, um, but um, usually there's a way around them. When I did this portrait with Seamus, uh, Mary and Seamus were so hospitable. Uh, I thought, well, I'll pop out and do a little seascape of close to where they live. So I nipped out, got my sketchbook, and my, his parting was, oh, be careful of the road. And of course, I was, and I was standing on the pavement on the way back, and bam, truck runs over me. I go underneath it. Wow. Um, so life changed suddenly. You know, life stopped as I'd known it. Taken to hospital, discharged myself, got my flight home, broken bones, teeth. Uh, I thought it was okay, but you know, I, I clearly wasn't. I was very concussed. Got back to the studio, shut myself in the studio, just me and the dog, and the painting of Seamus. And so <laughs> it was a very much a healing process. I couldn't talk properly. I sometimes had to hold 
uh, both hands with a brush, but it all felt normal, strangely. Um, but it slowed me down, um, and it changed the way that I painted slightly. After about six weeks, I went back to Dublin, and um, in a way, there was a much closer bond between us. We had dinner <laughs> one night at uh, in Dublin, and um, oh, there was a bottle of wine. I mean, Seamus had this great way of talking to. There's a bottle of wine on the table, and I'd forgotten to give him another glass, and he's looking at it, saying, "Sure, that's a fine bottle of Chablis on the table, sitting there." <laughs> And you know, that, that was the man. But anyway, uh, during that evening, he said, look, I've just come back from the oncologist, and it's not good, you know. But nobody realized exactly how ill he was. The painting was eventually finished round about June that year, and then it was unveiled in the Athenaeum. And it was a great occasion, you know. I felt much better. He looked fantastic. Marie came up to me and she said, He's writing, he's writing. She said, how do you know that? He said, well, when he's driving, he's drumming his fingers on the steering wheel. Uh, so it was a lovely, it was a great sense of occasion. Uh, and he liked the painting, which was good. Two weeks later, um, I was painting the studio. It's getting in early autumn. The doors were wide open. It was lovely and sunny. Um, it was, yeah, good feeling, nice day. And a friend phoned that morning and said, gosh, I'm so sorry to tell you, Fiona, that um, Seamus has, has, has passed away. And we were just so shocked, like everybody. So saddened by it. Uh, especially as I'd had, he'd phoned me the night before and left a message on the answer machine. And I, I couldn't quite understand it, so I, I wiped it. I thought, well, I'll phone him tomorrow. It's taken me four years, five years, to be able to look at that painting. That was a transformative year for me. Every painting special, but that painting was transformative. And um, I consider myself very lucky to have had the opportunity to do the painting and to meet Seamus. Uh, and here he now stands in the, or in the club, and he's there looking down in his all, uh, and still questioning. <laughs>